first thing to do is to go to your build.cs file and add a new dependency called gameplay abilities. Now let's compile and activate the plugin. Next, we are going to add two new classes. First one being the ability system component itself. And the other one is going to be the player state. As you can see here, it says that the player state is replicated to all clients. We are going to keep our ability system component on it for our player character because if we create the ability system component on the player itself and then the player dies, we won't have access to the ability system component. So instead, we are going to create it on the player state. I'm going to close and generate projects files again. Now in player state, Let's make a public section and add our constructor. I'm going to set net update frequency to 100 times per second. Next, let's create a ability system component on the player state. Make sure you create a UTP or whatever prefix you have chosen when creating your ability system component. Let's make it replicated. And set the uh, replication mode to mix. Full is used for offline or standalone games and minimal is used for characters that are controlled by the server, like our enemy. Let's make a getter to have easy access to our ability system component. There is already a getter function for this in the ability system interface that we can override and use. Next, we create a ability system component variable on our base character so that our enemy can set it and we can also set it from our player state for our player character. We override the getter function from the interface. Let's set up the enemy character first, as it's fairly simple. We create an ability system component in the enemy's constructor and set it to replicated and its replication mode to minimal. Now for the player character, I'm going to override two functions possessed by, which will be called when our controller takes control of our player character. And the second one is on rep player state, which is called on the client when the player state is set. Let's get our player state and check if it's valid. Then from the player state, we can access the ability system component and set the player character as the owner. Next, we set our ability system component variable that we have to the one on the player state. Now we need to do the same thing for the client. So I'm just going to copy and paste everything in the unwrap function. 
there's no point in having duplicates of our code, so I'm just going to make a helper function uh, to remove redundancy. Let's compile. I do get an error and it mentions the uh, gameplay task component. Let's quickly fix that. Go to build.cs and add a new private dependency, gameplay task. Now let's compile again. Now let's make a player state blueprint from our C++ class. Set it on the game mode. You can also set it from the project setting here. Now let's make a folder to contain our abilities. I will make my own gameplay ability class. So let's make a new C++ class and create one. Add our constructor and override these two functions. Activate ability and end ability. You can add logic here to define what happens when your ability starts and ends, but we are going to get into that later. Let's make an array of gameplay abilities on our base character so that we can set them in the blueprint. Common abilities, like the name suggests, is where I'm going to keep shared abilities for uh, our player and enemy character. Since my weapon is a big hammer, if you've ever played uh, Lost Ark, the big hammer class I think is called the Destroyer, so I'm just gonna call it Destroyer here. Now we need a way to give all these abilities to our character after setting them. Let's make a new function for it. Make sure that we are on the server before giving an ability. Now we can access the UTP ability system component. Let's go to it and add a new function there too actually. It's going to take an array of gameplay abilities. We make a for loop to go over all the abilities given to this function. To do this, we need to have access to the ability itself. We are going to set these in the blueprint and pass them to this function. So we need to break it down to access the ability. To do that, we need to access the uh, ability spec. For now, we are just going to give the ability and activate it immediately, just for testing purposes. We will be activating abilities by using keyboard and mouse input later. Back to my base character, let me call the add abilities function from the uh, ASC. Next, on the player character, in Possessed By, I'm going to call Add Abilities. 
Let's compile and test all of this. First, we make a blueprint from the game playability C we just made. Inside of it, when the ability is activated, I want to call play montage and wait and end the ability after. We need an animation to play. This is the animation I'm going to use. I'm going to make sure that it has root motion enabled. Right click on it and create a new anim montage. I'm going to name it AM for anim montage, tackle. Let's set it in our testability. Now let's add our newly created ability to our character. Add the blueprint here. Make sure we are on the server and play. Here we go, it's working. Of course, we don't have a way to manually trigger our abilities yet. We will set that up in the next tutorial. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and join the Discord. See you in the next tutorial.